that amongst the new, uh, some of the new players in radio, we're seeing some very large um, media companies like Time Warner, uh, Canwest, uh, Telewest, starting to get involved uh, in this media. Heart FM is a brand new radio station dedicated to... Heart FM in the Midlands is owned by one of the newest players in radio, the Chrysalis Record and Broadcasting Group, who also plan to launch a second station in London this year. In 1989, we're looking at television as an, as an area for us to expand into. Um, we got involved as part of that in the um, ITV Channel 3 franchises. And uh, it was whilst I was looking at uh, the franchise application process that I obviously came across what was then seen to be a Cinderella medium, namely radio. Um, and it immediately struck me as a business that perhaps had quite a lot of opportunity for us. It's now big business. It's not a little boy's game. It's a big boy's game. Um, the city has taken to commercial radio very well over the last couple of years. The returns investors are getting are terrific. Um, and it's now grown up, if you can put it like that, in corporate terms. Fixed costs in radio are really quite low. You have to cover the costs of the studio, cover the costs of the presenters, and obviously you have to cover uh, royalty payments for the music you transmit. But after that, uh, something like 85% of incremental revenue feeds directly through into increased profits. That's really what's been fueling the tremendous growth in the share price of the radio station groups that we've seen in the last 12 months. We're now in the programming area, which is a hive of activity at the moment, as the producers are bedding in and the presenters are joining as well. Hell of a hive. Hi, Scott. One of Talk Radio's much-hyped promises is to bring to Britain the American tradition of shock jocks, talk show hosts who are deliberately confrontational. Dan Ehrlich, our dangerous Dan. I think Sunday mornings, Dan. The American, yes. The American shock jock. Thank you. The type of presenters you'll get on Talk Radio UK will be as varied as Jeremy Beadle through to Scott Chisholm. So you've got a popular television entertainer there, together with a hard news journalist in Scott from Sky Television and various other places, together with an off-the-wall late-night presenter, Caesar the Geezer. So there really is something for everybody, but there will be a vein running through all programming, which is one of entertainment, irreverence, uh, confrontation, yes, to some degree. <laughs> Just going up to a quarter to ten. As the competition hots up, big name personalities are becoming increasingly important, as demonstrated by the media coverage of Steve Wright's departure from Radio One. Today, Chris Tarrant is the hottest property in radio's crucial slot, breakfast time. All your energy, all your money, all your investment, everything has to go into breakfast. I mean, that's, that's just the way it works. You, you catch an audience in the morning, because that's the best time for radio audiences. People are running around the house, they haven't got time really. I mean, GMTV and stuff have not done that well in this country. They're getting an audience, but you haven't really got time to sit down and watch this stuff. So radio is there, it's in, it's in that room, it's in that room, it's in your car. And I think obviously as our cities get more and more and more congested, you know, radio in the morning at breakfast time is, is becoming more and more and more important. And of course it's very important to advertisers. People are lying there with one eye open, you know, coming around in their motor cars, in a traffic jam or whatever, and they're waiting to be, you know, sold commercials. Thank you. Still taking your calls this morning, 25 past 9, 07148. Oh, sorry, 0711 Oh! I stand correct. Everyone listens to radio at breakfast time. People don't listen to radio very much in the evening, but everyone listens to radio at breakfast. And that's where competition is at its fiercest, and that's why Chris Tarrant and people like that earn very, very large sums. In the case of Chris Tarrant, who presents the most popular programme on the most popular station in the capital and has the lion's share of listening, he earns £504,000 a year. I keep reading that, yes. <laughs> Come on, they declared £22 million profit last year. It's amazing what people will do to get their hands on my dosh. Tune in to 95.8 Capital FM from 7 till 10. It's going to get more serious as well. I mean, the next few years, I mean, it's going to be like, you know, the, the, the main radio presenters and hopefully one or two sort of new hopefuls as well will we'll be paid very large sums of money. I mean, it's exactly what's happening in football, in sport, whatever. I mean, and that's happened to commercial radio and inevitably that will rub off on, on the Radio 1s and, and, and the other radio stations. If they're going to attract people, you know, they're going to have to pay them, basically. One of the consequences of the arrival of tremendous new competition has been to force up uh, the price of certain things in radio, uh, including the price of key stars at uh, at head-to-head -head competitive times like breakfast time. I think it's a disappointing feature 
of this explosion of competition in the marketplace that really the overall amount of listening to the radio has remained pretty static. In something like, uh, I suppose, 21 years of commercial radio, um, they haven't added a single listener to the total number of people who listen to the radio. Um, what they have done is targeted the BBC's audiences. I think that's a, a sad thing. The problem for the radio industry, including the BBC, is that what it means is that no one can start a radio station and make fresh listeners. You only get listeners by taking someone else's away. Everyone is scrabbling around in a pot that remains the same size. And that is clearly a problem because it means frenetic, frantic activity and the marketplace not increasing overall. It's a very interesting question about whether this uh, attack on the BBC's audiences can continue. I think that although the total amount of competition will grow and go on growing, I think we are coming to a point where the commercial stations will start to cannibalise each other's audiences. And Talk Radio goes on air on the 14th of February.